despite my driving skills, this is in 4K resolution. Look at that frame counter. We're getting over 100 FPS. The RTX 2080 Ti was a beast of a card and designed for 4K gaming. In fact, that's what it was advertised as, the ultimate 4K GPU. But how does it hold up in 2024? Well, we're about to find out as we throw some of the latest AAA titles at it, crank the settings to 11, and see if this iconic GPU still has what it takes. Let's get into it. So I may have spoiled the video. Yes, the RTX 2080 Ti can still run games at 4K in 2024. Now you're probably thinking there's gotta be a catch, right? Well, there is. What do you need in order to achieve 4K gaming on a card that's over five years old? I didn't do any overclocking to the GPU or the CPU. Now that I think about it, that would have only improved my results. Maybe next time. I didn't cherry pick games either to make the card look stronger than what it is. These are modern titles frequently played for honest results. I also didn't just run the tests at the lowest settings. This is a good mix between medium and ultra and even some ray tracing. Why don't I show you what kind of hardware my PC's got before I move on to the benchmarks. The main components that affect performance are the CPU and the GPU. Since you already know what graphics card is in this, why don't I show you what processor and motherboard combo I threw into this little test rig. Oh, if you don't care what parts are in the PC, you can use the timestamps below to skip ahead to the gameplay. But these things do matter, as newer and more powerful hardware can increase your FPS numbers. The motherboard is MSI's B550i Gaming Edge Max Wi-Fi. Using a B550 board limited me to AM4, but I felt it was more realistic to what might be paired with a five-year-old GPU. The best CPU that I could throw in here would be the ultra-powerful and popular Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. Instead, I decided to save myself a little bit of money and threw in the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. It's just as good and still gives us the best results for an AM4 build. I walked away only paying 192 bucks. Now, because I went with a more powerful CPU, of course, that means more heat. ID Cooling stepped up to the plate and sent us their DX240 Max. It's a 240 millimeter radiator that's 38 millimeters thick, rocking a Gen 7 pump with an addressable RGB pump head. ID Cooling states this can handle up to 300 watts of CPU power. It should be up to the task. I originally only had 16 gigabytes of RAM running at 3200 megahertz installed into this PC, but I changed my mind just before testing and threw in a 32 gigabyte kit of Team Group's T-Force Delta R clocked at 3600 megahertz. I made the swap because DDR4 RAM is very cheap right now, and I wanted to give the 2080 Ti the best chance I could in performance testing. I've also got a one terabyte crucial T500 NVMe SSD for our OS and our games. What more do you need? Of course, we needed enough power to run the 2080 Ti, and I like to give myself plenty of headroom. Well, Thermaltake delivered with their new Tough Power SFX series platinum rated power supplies. As the name suggests, they're 80 plus platinum certified and compatible with ATX 3.1 specifications. I've got the 850 watt model, but they also come in 750 and 1000 watts as well. 850 watts will be plenty for this rig, and they all come with a seven year warranty. Finally, let's talk GPU. My model is made by EVGA. For those of you that are just getting into PC gaming, you might not know about them because they stopped making graphics cards. So I guess this edition is kind of like a collectible now. I'm using the 2080 Ti XC Gaming. It has 4,352 CUDA cores and 11 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM on a 352-bit memory bus. Boy, they just don't make them like they used to. To put things in perspective, the top tier 4090 is the only current card that has a larger memory bus than the 2080 Ti. Even the 4080 only has a 256 bit. Now that you know our setup, why don't we talk benchmarks? In case you aren't aware, 4K gaming is very demanding. The higher the resolution, the more powerful GPU you'll need. Game settings are another challenge to your PC. As you increase quality in the settings menu, your FPS will decrease due to more demand on the system. This is why I decided to run a few different types of games with a couple different settings options. 
I ran a total of five different games on two different quality presets. They were ultra and medium. All today's tests were done at 4K resolution with three runs for each. Now the 20 series cards were the first time Nvidia introduced two new technologies to gaming. They were ray tracing and DLSS. Ray tracing is a way to realistically simulate the lighting of a scene by giving us more accurate reflections in things like water or mirrors, shadows, and lighting. DLSS, or deep learning super sampling, renders frames at a lower resolution, then upscales them so they'd look as sharp as expected at the native resolution. For example, with DLSS, a game's frames can be rendered at 1080p, then upscaled to 4K. This increases your frame rate without a loss of resolution. I figured I'd add DLSS and ray tracing to my testing as well. If you've learned something from this video so far, do me a favor and hit that like button so people can find this in that huge sea of content we call YouTube. Why don't we take a look at the first game? Forza Horizon 5 gives you nice visuals and a large open world. At native resolution on ultra settings, the 2080 Ti achieved 77.8 average FPS. If you drop the quality down to medium, you'll see over 100. Below are the same quality presets, but with ray tracing enabled. I did use DLSS when enabling ray tracing because they kind of go hand in hand. RT hurts performance, but DLSS improves it. You can see, thanks to DLSS, our FPS numbers improved ever so slightly. The next game was Cyberpunk 2077. This is a much more demanding title, and I was afraid the 2080 Ti wouldn't even be able to handle it. Remember, this is 4K resolution. At ultra settings, we achieved 30 FPS, which I know isn't very good. Dropping things down to medium only netted 44.8 FPS. It's playable, but not the smoothest. Ray tracing made things even worse. With RT on high and DLSS to quality, we saw 26 and 25.9 for ultra and medium respectively. I even restarted the game for the settings to take effect. At least it was able to run it. What if we use DLSS without ray tracing? Now we're talking. Ultra preset with no RT and DLSS to quality brings us to 41.7 FPS. Switching over to medium settings jumps us up to 71.9. A totally playable experience that feels smooth and is still 4K and it doesn't sacrifice too much. I honestly like the ultra settings with DLSS the best. You don't need an ultra high frame rate in a game like Cyberpunk 2077. The visuals and storyline are really what you're after. Speaking of visuals, Hogwarts Legacy is our next title. It's another very demanding game that has impressive ray tracing and visual details. The average FPS was slightly better than Cyberpunk, to the tune of 37.4 at Ultra and 58.1 on Medium. But you could see the 1% lows at Ultra were a little worse. The game had a bit of stuttering when approaching the VRAM buffer limit. Yes, it will use all 11 gigs of this card. Enabling ray tracing and DLSS actually improved the average FPS. DLSS on this game must be very good. Once again, the 1% lows were not. It has lots of stuttering and frame drops. Turning off RT but leaving DLSS saw fantastic numbers with 68.6 on Ultra and 105.2 for Medium. Not bad at all. Red Dead Redemption 2 is not a new game, but it's popular and visually appealing. At native resolution on Ultra settings, we saw 51.3 FPS average, increasing to 72.2 when switching to Medium. Now there is no ray tracing to enable in this game, but it does have DLSS. I didn't really see a need to use it since native looks great and has solid FPS numbers, but you can see the increase with DLSS when set to quality. I wanted to throw an FPS game into the mix, so I went with the most popular battle royale game ever, Fortnite. One thing I'll point out is I don't use Nanite or Lumen in testing. It's super demanding on the system and really hurts FPS. Most pros play this on medium or low settings anyway to eliminate distractions in the game. On Ultra settings, the 2080 Ti hit 43.7 FPS, and on Medium, 57.3. Not the greatest. I didn't test with ray tracing, because like I said, in FPS games, you want frames. DLSS helped a lot, achieving 105.1 on Ultra and 135.3 on Medium. 
If I was gonna run this setup myself, I would adjust settings manually to hit that magic 144 FPS number or higher. Gaming in 4K is extremely demanding and most people still aren't there. In fact, according to the Steam hardware survey, only 3.6% of users run a 4K display. Over 50% still game at 1080p. There's nothing wrong with that, I'm just stating the facts. The RTX 2080 Ti may no longer be the king of the hill, but I was impressed it can still run all the latest titles and at 4K resolution. Yes, we might need to sacrifice some quality settings or ray tracing to produce a smooth gaming experience, but the answer to my burning question is yes. It can indeed game at 4K. One of the fastest growing resolutions is 2560 by 1440. This is a good middle ground between resolution quality and performance. If I put a 4K and a 1440p monitor next to each other, I bet you wouldn't know which one's which. So do yourself a favor and skip 4K if all you plan to do is game. I think I'll keep the 2080 Ti in this little PC and maybe let my son use it to game until I can find something better like a 3080 or a 4080 on the used market, especially since the 50 series is right around the corner. Used GPUs, in my opinion, are the way to go. You get the best possible bang for your buck. Oh, and if you want to check out some more GPU-focused videos, I've got some that might interest you, and I'll leave them right over here, because this video is all done. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Sunny day, sunny day, sunny day. No clouds in the sky.